Welcome back to topic 40 for Algebra 2, Adding and Subtracting Rational Expressions. In part 2, we're going to explore how to add and subtract rational expressions with unlike denominators. What we first need to do is we need to find the least common multiple, or the LCM. And in order to do this, we're going to first factor each denominator. Then we're going to take those factors and multiply them to create a common denominator. Then we can either add or subtract the numerators depending on what the operation tells us to do and then simplify if possible. So this will involve factoring and possibly canceling out. So we're going to use these two properties here for addition and subtraction. If we have a divided by c plus b divided by d, in order to get a common denominator, we're going to multiply the first fraction by d over d and the second fraction by c over c so that we can get a common denominator of c times d. So our two factors here that we're dealing with are c and d. Then we can either add the numerator or subtract the numerator depending on what the operation tells us. We're going to start with this first example. x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 1 plus 2 divided by x squared minus 3x plus 2. So we're going to first take both denominators and factor them. We can rewrite the first fraction as x plus 3 divided by, now x squared minus 1, that's difference of squares. So we can rewrite that as x plus 1 and x minus 1. We're adding that to 2 divided by, now x squared minus 3x plus 2. We want to figure out, okay, what multiplies to 2 but adds to negative 3? Well, that's x minus 1 and x minus 2. So notice here how we have x plus 1 is a factor, x minus 1 is a factor, and then we also have and x minus 2. So our least common multiple here, what we want in our denominator is going to be x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 2. In order to have that be our denominator, I'm going to rewrite both fractions and then show which factors we need to multiply to both the numerator and denominator for each fraction. So we have x plus 3 in our first fraction divided by x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now the factor that's missing here is x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by x minus 2. Then we're going to add that to 2 divided by x minus 1 times x minus 2. The factor that we're missing here is x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply that to both the numerator and denominator. Now you'll notice that we have the same factors in the denominator. They're shared. So what we can do is just multiply the numerators and then put it together over the same common denominator. So my common denominator now is x plus 1 x minus 1 and x minus 2. Now the first value we have x plus 3 times x minus 2 for that numerator. I can multiply this out and get x squared plus x minus 6. And I'm adding that to my 2 times x and 2 times 1. So 
So 2x plus 2. Now my numerator, I can combine like terms. And I get x squared plus 3x minus 4 all over that common denominator of x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. Whew. Now, is there another way that we can simplify this? Well, we can actually factor the numerator. So I can rewrite x squared plus 3x minus 4 as x plus 4 and x minus 1. All over again that same denominator, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2. Now can I cancel anything here? Well, both the numerator and denominator both have x minus 1, x minus 1. So I can rewrite my final answer as x plus 4 over x plus 1, x minus 2. Now I don't need to multiply anything else, I'm all set here. However, I do need to identify if there's any restrictions on my domain. So remember the domain, the denominator cannot equal zero. So the restrictions on the domain are any values that would make our denominator equal to zero. So even though I already canceled out this x minus one, I need to focus on every single factor in that denominator. So in this case, x can't equal negative 1, positive 1, or positive 2. Moving on to the next example, we have x divided by x plus 2 plus 4 divided by x plus 5. Now this is really nice because we don't have to factor anything in our denominators. They're already in simplest form. So we can identify that we have an x plus 2 in one fraction and an x plus 5 in the other. So in order to get our least common multiple, it will be the product of these two factors. So I'm going to write my two fractions over. And now multiply. So my first fraction doesn't have an x plus 5 in the denominator, and what I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator. My second fraction doesn't have an x plus 2 in the denominator. What I do to the denominator, I also do to the numerator. Now that they have a common denominator, I can rewrite this. x plus 2, x plus 5, and I can simplify the numerator. So I can distribute and get x squared plus 5x plus 4x plus 8. Now can I combine any like terms? I'll get x squared plus 9x plus 8. Looking at this final value here, can I factor the numerator to cancel out with anything in the denominator? Well, I can factor the numerator to be x plus 1 times x plus 8 because they multiply to 8 but add to 9. However, does that cancel out with anything in my denominator? It does not. So technically, I'm already set with this value right here. That's my final answer. And I can look at my denominator to figure out what restrictions are going to be on my domain. So x can't equal negative 2 and negative 5. Moving to the next example, we have x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 6 minus 16. And now we're subtracting. So minus x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 6x plus 8. So I'm going to factor both denominators to start. So x squared minus 6x minus 16 can be factored into x plus 2 times x minus 8. And I'm going to subtract 
x plus 1 times x squared plus 6x plus 8 is x plus 2 times x plus 4. So we have an x plus 2 in both of our denominators. So I don't need to multiply that additionally to either fraction. However, the first one has an x minus 8, and the second one has an x plus 4. So to my first fraction, in order to get the least common multiple, my least common multiple would be x plus 2, x minus 8, and x plus 4. I'm going to multiply my first fraction, top and bottom, by x plus 4. And my second fraction, top and bottom, by x minus 8. So my new denominator is going to be x plus 2 times x minus 8 times x plus 4. My numerator, if I multiply them out, I have x plus 1 times x plus 4. That will give me x squared plus 5x plus 4. And I'm subtracting, remember we're dealing with subtraction here, x plus 1 times x minus 8, which gives me x squared minus 7x minus 8. So I can distribute this, which basically means I'm applying this negative to every single term in that second polynomial. For my final answer, my x squareds are going to cross out. So my second term, my linear term, I'll get 5x minus a negative 7x, which is 5x plus 7x, gives me 12x, and 4 minus a negative 8, or 4 plus 8, which gives me 12, over x plus 2 times x minus 8 times x plus 4. Now, can I factor the numerator in any way? I can. I can factor out a 12. So 12 times x plus 1 divided by x plus 2 times x minus 8 times x plus 4. Now, can this cancel in any way? Can I reduce anything? No, since it's not a common factor in both the numerator and denominator, can't reduce anything. So you can use either way as your final answer. For the domain, though, I need to look at my denominator. So x cannot equal negative 2, positive 8, or negative 4. Moving on to example 4. Here we're dealing with a complex fraction, which basically means that we have a fraction inside of a fraction. So what I like to do here is just break it down. So I'm just going to focus on the numerator. just to make it a little bit more manageable. In the numerator, I have 1 over x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. So I have an x in the denominator of one fraction, and it's not in the denominator of the other fraction. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x divided by x. And remember, that reduces down to 1, so I'm not actually changing the value of that fraction, even though it might look a little different. My other denominator has an x plus 1. However, that's not in the denominator of my first fraction. So I'm going to multiply that first fraction as x plus 1 times x plus 1. Then I can rewrite my final answer. So my denominator of this numerator is going to be x times x plus 1. My numerator is going to be 1 times x plus 1, 
just gives me x plus 1 plus 2x. So if I simplify this, I get 3x plus 1 divided by x times x plus 1. Whew, okay. Oh wait, that's just the numerator. So I still need to focus on my denominator right here. So I'm going to rewrite my numerator. 3x plus 1 divided by x times x plus 1. And whenever I do division, I like to use the division sign in order to break it up a little bit more. Divided by 1, divided by y. Now, if you like keep change flip, if you like multiply by the reciprocal, whatever floats your boat. Here, I like to, whenever I see dividing fractions, don't ask why, just flip and multiply. So we have 3x plus 1 divided by x times x plus 1. Now we're going to change our sign times y over 1. So our new answer will be 3x plus 1 times y over x times x plus 1. Now I can distribute this y and get my final answer of 3xy plus y over x times x plus 1. Now looking back at the domain, I have my x times x plus 1. So obviously for my domain, x can't equal 0 or negative 1. However, if you remember back to topic 39, when we were multiplying and dividing rational expressions, we have to look at our denominator of our original problem. So our denominator here is 1 over y. 1 obviously doesn't equal 0, but we also have to mention that y can equal 0. So if we had a variable in our numerator of this overall denominator, we'd also have to say that that could not equal 0, as well as any variables that are in the denominator of that fraction. So here, since the only variable we're dealing with is y, we just have to include also that y can't equal 0. Okay, two more problems. Next problem, 1 divided by x minus 1 divided by x plus 1 divided by 3 plus 4 divided by x minus 1. Whew, okay. So just like what we did in problem number 4, where we just focused on one second, second, section, we're going to do the same thing here. But this time we're just going to focus on the denominator. So I'm going to rewrite that. x plus 1 divided by 3. And we're adding it to 4 divided by x minus 1. So we have 3, which is in the denominator of our first fraction. But it's not included in the denominator of our second. So we have to multiply top and bottom by 3 over 3. And it's okay. Your factor doesn't have to include a variable. A factor can also just be a number, like we have 3 here. Our second fraction has x minus 1. Now it's in the denominator of that second fraction, but not in the denominator of the first. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by, not x plus, x minus, x minus 1 x minus 1. Then I can rewrite this. My new denominator is 3 times x minus 1. My numerator, I'm going to multiply x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now this is difference of squares, so this is going to simplify to x squared minus 1. And then 4 times 3, I'm going to be adding 12 to it. So my final answer is going to be x squared plus 11 divided by 3 times x minus 1. Now again, this is just the denominator. So I'm going to go back to my original problem and rewrite it. So I have 1 divided by x minus 1 divided by oops, x squared plus 11 divided by 3 times x minus 1. I can rewrite this as 1 over x minus 1 times 
3 times x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 11. And notice here, I'm just multiplying. I'm not adding or subtracting, so I don't need to find another common denominator. What I can notice, though, is that some of my factors cancel. I have an x minus 1 in the numerator and an x minus 1 in the denominator. So I can rewrite this as my final answer to be 3 divided by x squared plus 11. Okay, let's think back to the domain. So with my domain, I want to think about the denominator of my first fraction, which is my x minus 1, and then I want to think back to both the numerator and denominator of my second fraction. So I know my domain x can't equal positive 1. That would give us 0 in the denominator. But I also have this x squared plus 11. Now if I set x squared plus 11 equal to 0 to figure out what value of x would make this 0, I would subtract 11 from both sides and get x squared equals negative 11. Or x equals the square root of negative 11, which is the same thing as saying x equals i root 11 plus or minus. So this we're dealing with imaginary numbers, but domain only deals with real numbers. The domain does not include imaginary numbers. So any values that are identified or defined as non-real are not included in the domain. So the only restriction that we have right here is that x can't equal 1. Moving on to our final problem, we're almost there, 2 minus 1 divided by x divided by x plus 2 divided by x. So here we have to deal with our numerator and our denominator in terms of adding and subtracting rational expressions. So I'm going to first focus on my numerator. So I have 2 minus 1 over x. Now 2 can be rewritten as 2 over 1. So in my denominator, the only thing that I have in one fraction that's not in the other is this x right here. So I'm going to multiply my 2 by x divided by x. And this will give me 2x minus 1 all over x. Now my denominator I have x plus 2 divided by x. Again, this x is really just over 1. And the only variable, or the only factor that's in one fraction that's not in the denominator of the other is this x right here. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction by x over x. And that will leave me with x squared plus 2 divided by x. Now I'm all set to simplify. So I'm going to rewrite as 2x minus 1 divided by x divided by x squared plus 2 divided by x. So if you want to do keep, change, flip, don't ask why, just flip and multiply. Multiply by the reciprocal. 2x minus 1 divided by x times x divided by x squared plus 2. The values that cancel, because again, we're just multiplying here, we have x and x. So we'll get as our final answer 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 2. 
Now thinking back to our domain, I want to include both the value here, my x, which is in actually both the numerator and the denominator, the numerator of the second fraction and the denominator of the first, and my x squared plus 2. So I know right off the bat that x can't equal 0. And I also have x squared plus 2 can't equal 0. So if I try to solve for x, I'm going to get x squared equals negative 2, square root of both sides, and x equals plus or minus i root 2. So again, here we're dealing with imaginary, so we do not need to include this in our domain restriction. The only value that x cannot equal is 0. And congratulations! That is the end of part 2 of topic 40, adding and subtracting rational expressions. Thank you for watching.